Hi, everyone. Welcome to day three of the Fibonacci and Elliott Wave conference uh, on timingresearch.com. And it's brought to you by tradeoutloud.com, uh, fxtradersedge.com, and timingresearch.com. This is the 47th of our Synergy Trader event series. And uh, uh, just a quick uh, disclaimer all of these presentations are for educational purposes only. Trading is not suitable for all people. Be sure to consult with a financial advisor and only trade with money you can afford to lose. Uh, all of these sessions are being recorded individually, and those will be available on timingresearch.com as soon as I can get them posted. Also, if you search for timing research on uh, um, YouTube and Substack and, or your favorite podcast app, uh, you can find um, find the recordings there as well. So to open day three of this event, uh, we have uh, um, Aldo here. And uh, sorry, can you pronounce your last name for me again? I should have. <laughs> I, I can't either. It's La Gruta. La Gruta. La Gruta. Okay, great. So thank you for being here to open the day for us. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you so much, David. I want to know, I have the webinar chat in front of me. I don't know if you guys are seeing it as well and it's preventing you from looking at the slides. Oh, um, yeah, it uh, it doesn't show up for, you mean it, you think it's transmitting? Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't show up like that, so. Okay, fabulous, then I'll keep it there so I could see the questions. Yeah, yeah, and you can yeah. you should be able to move it around too if it's in your way. Uh, actually, I can't, but for whatever reason, but we'll see. Okay, well, thank you very much, guys, for being with me here today. The name of this short class is The Elliott Wave Principle in a Nutshell. So I'm going to try to summarize it all in just a few minutes. So my name is Aldo Lagruta, and I'm a certified Elliott Wave Analyst as well as a financial technician from the International Federation of Technical Analysis. And with that said, I think we should delve into our presentation because we have a lot to cover in a very short time. There are three premises on which technical analysis is based. I find that in order to understand the wave principle, we need to familiarize ourselves, understand, and accept those three promises. The first one is market action discounts everything. The next is prices move in trend. And finally, history repeats itself. I do hope you will remember these three tenets of technical analysis because they will help you understand and improve your trading in the future. Even if you are not counting waves, having those premises in mind will help you. The first principle is key. It basically means that we, technicians, believe that anything that can possibly affect the price, being political, economical, psychological, or otherwise like a natural disaster, will be reflected on price. Hence, the study of price is all that is required. And price forms patterns. Since the third tenet of technical analysis tells us that history repeats itself, we expect those price patterns to repeat over and over again with similar results. And what we're going to study today is a small number of patterns, or rather the small numbers of patterns that Elliot identified. One would think that there is an infinite number of such patterns, but that's not really the case. At its most basic level, wave analysis is simply the identification of 13 patents in market prices. And in fact, only being able to recognize 
and differentiate two of those patterns, with that alone, you will make huge improvements in your trading results and your psychology as well. Now, before we delve into patterns, I want to clarify a couple of things because stating that you will be improving your trading results uh, in a dramatical, uh, dramatical way could be misleading. So let me tell you two things about the wave principle. The first one is that the wave principle is not a trading methodology. It's an analytical tool, but fear not. It can be successfully used as a trading methodology if you choose to do so. In fact, I should say that it can actually be the best trading methodology ever because no technical tool known has the power to identify the most likely turn in prices with the accuracy that the wave principle does. And with that in mind, you get perfect guidance as to where to enter and exit positions. And most importantly, where to place your stops for the highest probability of success. And the second thing I should warn you with is that contrary to what people usually believe, the wave principle is extremely simple. So I'm going to draw this for you. I'm going to show you the wave principle and and please be patient with me so I get this thing. Okay. All right, so I'm going to make a small drawing here of what the, the wave principle is. Basically, you will see five waves moving in a direction and three waves moving in the opposite direction. Okay, so what you see in front of you it summarizes the entire wave theory. I know that many of you have likely heard that the wave principle is extremely complex, obscure, and subjective. Those eight waves that you see in front of you, let's count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those eight waves summarize it all. That's all there is to Elliott wave. Five waves in one direction, and three waves in the opposite direction. Simple, right? Well, before I, before I, I forget, uh, I should tell you that um, whatever I do uh, today, whatever drawings I show you, they will be uh, done in one direction, but you will be able to see them in all directions, okay? So uh, don't think that the wave principle only goes in a bullish uh, way or it only presents itself in a bullish market. We could do the same in the opposite direction. I just want to uh, do it only in one direction so it's, it's, it, it's all congruent, okay? Now, this is very simple. Five waves up, three waves down. But simple is not always necessarily easy. And perhaps because of that, way too many people try to learn the wave principle using the same approach they would use for learning other trading tools. And then of course they fail. Then they spread the many objections and criticisms that we hear so often. They'll tell yeah. you, if you put three elioticians in a room, you'll get three different interpretations. Therefore, it is not worthy to learn the wave principle. But that is silly. It's almost like saying if you have three people in a room, you will get three different views on life. Therefore, it will be better if we die. And it's not that, that the case. So we think exactly the opposite. And the reason why I warned you about the simplicity of the wave principle is because the extraordinary simplicity could be deceiving. It's also unbelievably simple that it feels that you're going back to kindergarten where you are going to be learning how to count to five. You will feel a, a bit infantile because you will learn your ABCs. And you'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. Now, 
Eliot noticed that social behavior moves, trends, and reverses in recognizable patterns. In other words, crowd behavior is predictable. He isolated those 13 patterns that I told you about that are known as waves. And they recur over and over again. So he named them, he defined and illustrated these patterns with amazing details. He then described that they link together to form versions of themselves. And they link to form the same patterns of the next larger size to produce a predictable progression. So it would be something like if you were to take, let's, uh, let's make this smaller. Okay, if you were to take this one, and now we repeat the same pattern. <clears throat> let's start it from here. And we put five waves more up like that, and three waves down, and then five more waves up, etc. cetera. Okay, so <clears throat> they link themselves to larger and larger patterns, okay? So the difference is the what we call in Elliott wave principle, the degrees. So let's say that we label these patterns. Let's, let's label them together. Let me use this. Okay, let's say that we put this as a one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so you can see that these numbers are single numbers. And these five waves here will represent the first uh, leg of a much larger pattern, right? But also is still the first leg, right? So we would label that with a different degree. So it will be like this. We will label this as a one, two, three, four, and five. But to identify or differentiate this degree from this one, we'll put this one in parentheses. So these ones are going to be called intermediate. And then what's going to happen is that the entire move here, those entire five waves, will also be the first leg of something much larger. And so this uh, leg here, up here, will also be the one, but the one of a much larger degree. So this will be called a minor degree. You don't have to learn those names now. What is important is that you, you uh, learn the different degrees. This will be a minor, this will be intermediate, and the one up here would be the... Um, primary degree, okay? So basically, all these eight, eight waves, five up and three down, that's three down we label as ABCs, this is all there is to the wave principle. And that's precisely what we know today as the Elliott wave theory. Five patterns, um, not five patterns, five waves, followed by three waves in the opposite direction that link together to form larger and larger waves. As his main tool, Elliot, using his research, the stock market, and he noticed that those 13 patterns, let's call them waves, were always there. They happened over and over again in the price data. And when you are able to identify these patterns and where they are likely to occur in the overall path of the market, then you have one of the most effective forecasting tools that exist. Think about it. It's not the same to identify these five waves here, right? On the first, let's say the first wave of a larger degree as to identify these five waves here, right, of a larger degree. If you think about it, when you identify these five waves, it actually implies that this is the first wave of something so much larger that it involves 
the prediction of much higher prices ahead. Whereas if you identify them on this position, you identify these five waves here, well, it implies a major decline, maybe even a change or a reverse in trend. So it is important for us to be able to identify the, the patterns in the overall path of the market, okay? Now, let's go back to, to our slides, if I find them, and we are going to try to learn those um, 13 patterns at once, okay? So, here are the 13 Elliott patterns. Now, of course, I'm kidding when I tell you we're going to identify them all and learn them all at once because that would be really difficult to do. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I spent years trying to learn them and for some reason I always forgot some. Okay, and that's precisely why I kind of uh, simplify the whole thing because after all, you know, if we're trying to learn them this way, it would be pretty difficult to remember them. But when we frame them into something simpler, it will be so easy. You will see in a moment. So let's simplify them and learn them, learn, learn them quickly. Okay, all you have to do right now is to learn there are two modes of a wave development. One is called motive waves, motive, and the next is called corrective waves. The entire 13 patterns identified by Elliot can be easily framed into those two forms of wave development, motives and corrective. All the patterns that you see in front of you in the slide in front of you, they fall under the category of motive or corrective. Therefore, let's just memorize those two right now motive waves and corrective wave. In a matter of speaking, all we do all day as politicians is to try to differentiate between those two, between a motive wave and a corrective wave. If we, if we see a five wave structure, we believe the trend is in that direction. And if we spot a three wave structure, we conclude that the trend is in the opposite direction. That means that motive waves are the ones that move in the direction of the main trend and have a five wave structure like you just saw in my drawing, label one through five, as you just saw in my drawing, right? Corrective waves are the opposite. They move against the trend. They interrupt the main energy that is moving in the direction of the trend and have a three wave structure. They are labeled with letters, A, B, C. So, so far, I suppose, I, expo I ex expect or I hope that so far you are with me, you're following me. Basically, two different type of wave development, motive and corrective. Motive both in the direction of the trend, they are in five and they are labeled with numbers. Corrective move in the opposite direction, they are labeled with letter. Okay, so if this is clear, then let's move one step further, okay? Let's show you how this motive and corrective waves subdivide. The motive waves subdivide into impulses and diagonals, okay? Both impulses and diagonals have five waves. And as I said, they are labeled one through five. And both move in the direction of the trend. So when we see something like this, that means we are in front of a motive wave. Now this particular one, and we can use one of them, let's say, Let's use this. This particular one is an impulse. 
Impulse have very particular characteristics, okay? All of these legs, the one, the three, and the five, <clears throat> they all develop or, or subdivide into five small waves. The diagonals are not that way. The diagonals are a bit different. So I'm going to show you how the diagonals look like. They would be with three waves each time, as if they were correctives. And that's why they can be tricky sometimes. Okay, they move three waves in all directions. And you can see that typically this, these are pretty much what people consider in traditional technical analysis wedges, right? That's pretty much how they look like. Okay, basically they are moving in threes, A, B, C, 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 A, B, C. But each one of those three counts as one, two, three, four, and five. Exactly like this one, one, two, three, four, and five. The difference between these two is that each leg here is five, whereas each leg here is three. And there's another difference. If you notice, wave four, let's say one, two, three, four, wave four is pretty much overlapping with wave one, whereas here wave four is way ahead of wave one. Right? So those are that those are, would be the, the main difference between them. We will speak more about them in a moment. Now, do you remember how we just said that corrective waves stop after three wave development? Remember these. We identify counter trend moves as ABCs, and we always relate them to threes. In fact, all corrective waves are in Elliot known as threes. Okay, likewise, let's use that as a mnemo mnemotechnic uh, way to remember that corrective waves subdivide into three types. Okay, let's go back to our um, slide so you can see it. Three types, in this case, are zigzags, flats, and triangles. Okay, very easy to remember, simply because correctives are threes and they subdivide into three, and they are of three types, zigzags, flats, and triangles. Motif waves subdivide into five, and they are of two types. So now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't learn all the corrective waves, so I'm going to introduce them to you. And so you are familiar with the way they look. Okay, so one of them, the zigzag, looks like, well, like a zigzag. <laughs> so a zigzag would look like this. Okay, and typically is labeled as A, B, C. Then we have the, uh, the next one. The next one will be a flat. Okay, the difference with a flat is that it's very similar to the zigzag. The A looks like the, this one, but the B is instead of stopping right in the middle, goes all the way to the origin of the A and then comes down in C. You know, it looks like an inverted N. Well, when we are talking about uh, a bullish market. If we were talking about a bearish market, it would, would actually look like an N. And finally, the triangles. Well, the triangles look like this. And the triangles are a bit of an exception of the, um, of the three rule. Okay, the triangles are developing in five. You see, like one, two, three, four, and five. But because they don't have direction, you can see that they, are, they develop horizontally. Because of that, they are not motive waves. They are correctives. And as such, should be labeled with letters. So the letters that we use to label a triangle are 
A, B, C, but now we have two more, D and E. Okay, but still corrective are labeled with letters. Now, in as much as I'd love to give you the entire wave principle in a 45 minute presentation, it's kind of difficult. So we'll be focusing now on the impulses. And the reason is because even if that's the only thing you learn today, you'll be in a much better position in your trading, okay? So, and why is that? Well, very simple. Impulses are the ones that identify the trend. Remember, they count, they're counted in five and the trend move in that direction. Correctives are exactly the opposite. So if we are able to identify the trend, then you'll be able to forecast the next move because you know exactly what happened after one, two, three, four, five. Well, it always comes an A, B, and a C, right? So let's go back to our impulses. Let's, let's make an, another drawing of the impulses. Okay, and not that you forget about the three corrective, but let's focus on this. Let's say we have a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. Okay, so there we have an impulse. As we discussed before, we know that after one, two, three, four, and five, it always comes in A, B, and C. So once that you have five waves in one direction, you can always forecast three waves in the opposite direction. And this is at this degree of development, right? But remember, each one of these legs had five legs. Remember the first drawing we made? Each one of these have five legs. So we could actually draw it like this. It would be awful, but it doesn't matter. Five legs there. And then this leg will also have five legs like this. Yeah. And this leg should also have five legs like this. Okay, so once that you identify five legs at any degree, really, when you have these five legs here, you can predict an ABC in the opposite direction. If you have these five legs here, you can predict an ABC in the opposite direction. And when you have these five legs here, you can predict an ABC in the opposite direction. Now, this was on each one of these degrees, but what about the entire thing? The entire thing is also five legs, so we can predict a three legs in the opposite direction, okay? The difference is that the three legs are going to be a lot deeper than this one or this one or this one, right? Because they are going to be a correction of a much larger degree. In market, and according to Elliot, also in nature, progress, ultimately it takes the form of those five waves that we are um, drawing there. Three of these waves, which are labeled one, three, and five, are the ones that actually affect the directional movement. They are all separated, you know, this one, three, and five. They're all separated by these um, counter trend interruption, this two and four, okay? Now, Elliot noticed three consistent aspects of the five wave form of the impulse. And those were, those aspects were so consistent that in order to correctly identify and label a structure as an impulse, in order for this to qualify as an impulse, it had to have those three aspects present and respected. In other words, those are the rules by which impulse waves must adhere. And I'm starting with these rules in the first presentation you see of me today, simply because you must know these rules as well as you know your name. Everything depends on those rules. 
And if you learn them now, it will be a lot easier for you to understand the rest of the class with my colleagues later on. And if you don't forget these rules, you will be really, um, you will really be able to identify impulses and therefore you will be in a much better position to know where the trend truly is. Okay, so let's go back to the slides because there I have those uh, rules written for you. Okay, so here are the three rules. The first one, wave two never moves beyond the start of wave one. Wave three is never the shortest and wave four never ends in the price territory of wave one. You may want to write them down because they are amazingly important and they will really help you. If you are able to identify the trend, imagine what you can do. And in order to identify the trend, you need those three rules. First one said that wave two cannot travel more or a larger distance than the starting point of wave one. Well, that's here. So wave two cannot go all the way here and go beyond the origin of wave one. The second rule is that wave three is never the shortest. Now, not being ever the shortest doesn't mean that it always has to be the longest. Not necessarily so. Don't confuse those two because that's what most people do, but they're not the same. So wave three should never be the shortest. And finally, wave four, this wave here, could not end inside the territory of wave one. Remember that in the impulses, we actually saw them going inside the territory of wave one? Uh, not the impulses, the diagonals. And that's precisely what makes a difference between a diagonal and an impulse. An impulse cannot uh, have that happening, okay? To be in order to be an impulse. So these three rules are of major importance. So please commit them to memory at once. It's very easy. For instance, you can remember the first rule refers to the first leg, okay? The first rule refers to the first leg. What's the first leg? Well, the first rule says that wave two can never travel more than 100% of the distance traveled by wave one. Okay, that's the first one. First refers to the first. The next rule is, well, the next wave. Okay, the next wave is third wave can never be the shortest. And the next rule is, again, the next wave. Fourth wave can never end in the territory of wave one. So now, now that you know the rules, let's draw some examples. And you're gonna help me identify if those are actually impulses, okay? For instance, let's say that we have these five waves moving up like this. Would this be an impulse? I have your chat in front of me. Hopefully I will be able to read. Oh, I see a question here. The, don't see eight waves, just three fingers of like analysis. I don't really know what that is. Okay, so you guys, this is not a rhetorical question. Tell me, does this qualify as an impulse? We have there five waves. Look, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I get some no's, and now the question is, why not? Every time that you look at a potential impulse, a five-wave move in a particular direction, and you want to make sure that this qualifies as a trend, you want to compare that, or yeah, check it against the three rules. In this case, as you say, wave two breaks wave one. Actually, the way to say would be wave two travels more than 100% the distance traveled by wave 
one. Now, somebody else says three is the largest. Well, no. Typically, the third way wave is indeed the longest. It doesn't have to be the longest, but it cannot be the shortest, okay? So the three rules again, second wave cannot travel more than 100% the distance traveled by wave one. Next rule is wave three can never be the shortest. Okay, very good. I'm glad that you were able to identify this. Now you know exactly what to do when you see price a price situation in that looks like that. Now let's see this one. We have a wave one, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four, and a wave five. Does this qualify as an impulse? Somebody says yes, and I want to know why the the answer to the why would be that because it respects the three rules but the correct answer is no and we'll see why basically because it doesn't respect the three rules again let's go through the three rules wave two never travels more than 100 percent the distance traveled by wave one well, that's okay, it did well. Wave three can never be the shortest. Uh oh, it is the shortest here. Therefore, it cannot qualify as an impulse. No, it is not because wave five is the longest because any one of these waves can be the longest. What is important is that wave three cannot be the shortest of one, three, and five. In this case, look at the size of wave one, it's much larger than wave three. Look at the size of wave five, it's much larger than wave three. Therefore, wave three is the shortest. And it can never be the shortest because it doesn't qualify as an impulse then, okay? Good, now let's look at another example. Okay, and apparently I won't be able to erase this, let's see, <laughs> okay. Got it. Let's look at this example. One, two, three, four, five. Would that qualify as an impulse? Remember, check them against the three rules. Go one by one. Yes, very good. Now tell me why. More yeses, wonderful. I'm glad that you are seeing it now. The answer, the correct answer for why is because it respects the three rules, okay? Wave two did not travel more than 100% the distance traveled by wave one. Wave three is not the shortest. And wave four did not end in the price territory of wave one. So it's an impulse. Therefore, from there, what can we say? If we see something like that, what can we predict? Is the market going to go up or down? In the, the most meaningful move, the next meaningful move, when we see those five waves, is the market going to go up or down? down precisely in a correction precisely congratulations why because we know the wave principle look the wave principle says after five waves you'll get a three wave correction very 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 good guys one last one last example let's see this is wave one this is wave two wave three wave four and wave five does that qualify as an impulse You must feel like I'm testing you, right? <laughs> in fact, I'm just trying to help you remember these in a practical way. So don't be afraid of making a mistake. No, precisely because wave four comes 
in the territory of wave one. The correct way is that wave four can never end inside the territory of wave one. And in this case, it did. Therefore, this cannot qualify as an impulse. Very good. Now you know that these three rules um, should always be there. I hope that you have them now, down now, that they are inside your head or inside your heart. They should always be present. They should always be your guide and uh, will help you identify realistically uh, uh, an, uh, an uptrend in this case. Typically, you would say an uptrend, look at this, it's a very interesting thing. Let's say we get this situation. Typically, we would say an uptrend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. But this is an higher highs and higher lows, yet we, knowing a little bit of Elliot, know that this cannot be the uptrend. Why not? Well, because wave four enter into the territory of wave one. Therefore, this does not qualify as an impulse, okay? Very, very, very interesting thing. Now, besides the three rules for impulses, the wave principle also provides us with fabulous guidelines. Some of them have to do with Fibonacci numbers. And because of that, because we have in this conference on Elliot and Fibonacci, we're going to mention some of them, okay? In fact, Elliot said that the Fibonacci sequence was the mathematical base of the wave principle. I'm going to just mention a few of them so you uh, see them in action. You probably remember the Fibonacci sequence. You have been two days in this uh, conferences, so I'm sure some of my colleagues have presented the Fibonacci sequence. And you probably remember that it goes with zero, one, two, three, five. Okay, and then after five, eight. And you know that they are formed by adding each number from the previous one. So we have clear, clear uh, numbers for this Fibonacci sequence. Three is part of the Fibonacci sequence, right? Well, uh, corrective waves are in three, and there are three of them. Five is part of the Fibonacci sequence. You know that impulses develop into a five wave structure. Eight is part of the Fibonacci sequence is five plus three. Well, we know that the eight wave cycle is precisely what represents the entire wave principle. Now, beyond that, it's an interesting thing to know that each one of these waves relate to the others by a Fibonacci number, okay? In the case of wave two, it typically relates to wave one by uh, the 0.618. In other words, you would expect, by the way, these are not rules, remember? Rules must be present all the time. Guidelines are different. Guidelines can or may or may not happen, okay? In this particular case, let's say that as a guideline, wave two is typically expected to retrace 62, or let's say 1.6, uh, 0.618 of the distance traveled by wave one, okay? so. When you measure wave two here, and actually you measure wave one to see where wave two would end, you would expect that to be at the 62% or the 0.618. Then we have wave three. Typically you expect that wave three would travel at least 1.618, the distance traveled by wave one. So you would let you would measure wave one projected from wave two, and you would expect that at least you would accomplish a 1.618 as the distance. Doesn't have to be exact, but you expect that they will relate by a Fibonacci proportion. And then wave four. Well, wave four relates to wave three by the 38%. Typically, wave four retraces 38% um, of the distance traveled by wave three, as opposed to wave two, which is typically expected to retrace deeper to the 62%. And lastly, wave five typically relates to the entire uh, one through three projected from four 
in a Fibonacci proportion. In other words, from here to here, projected from, from suspected wave four would give us either 0.618 would give us equality, it will give us 1.382, 1.618, et cetera. Or it would be exactly equal to wave one. But they all relate to each other in a very uh, clean Fibonacci proportion. Now, let's look at what we have discussed in a real chart, okay? So let's, let's do this. So you can see that this is actually applicable. This is way beyond simple theory, despite the name of the Elliott wave theory. Now, here is a trick for you. Whenever you see a chart like this, most people actually lean forward to, to see, to be able to count those waves. And what I'm going to ask you is precisely the opposite. Take distance. I typically tell my students, take a helicopter view. Okay, go high, take altitude, and see this from the distance. And when you do that, you would see that starting from here, starting from the low, you would see it went up. Then it went down. Then it went up again. Then it went down. Then it went up again. Now, doesn't it look like those drawings that we were making before? Indeed it does, right? Therefore, could we label this as an impulse? Could we say, for instance, let's use these correct numbers here. Let's say, could this be a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five? Please tell me if this would qualify as an impulse. And you will tell me, uh, why as well? I hear you guys thinking. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Okay, some say no, some say yes. Well, let's do it. Let's go through the rules. Wave two. Remember, the first rule refers to the first leg. Wave two, did it travel more than 100% the distance traveled by wave one? No, it didn't. Okay, so wave first, first rule, check. Wave three, is it the shortest? Well, not really, look at the wave one, it's a lot shorter than wave three. Therefore, it's not the shortest. So the second rule, check. Let's look at wave four. Did wave four end, end it in the prior territory of wave one? No, it didn't. Therefore, third rule, check. So it means that it does qualify as a five-wave move, you have one, two, three, four, and five. Now, <clears throat> what happened after five-wave move? If you see this chart, what would you tell me with what you've learned so far in, in the past 50 minutes? What would you predict here? Would you say, as most people say, well, this is an up, um, a higher highs and a series of higher highs and a series of lower low or of of higher lows. Therefore, this is an uptrend. Trends tend to persist. Therefore, we should buy because prices are going to go up. So, this would be what most people tell you, right? But with little knowledge of Elliot, you know you were correct. You said, expect a correction. Precisely, you should expect an ABC down. Another one say, need an ABC correction. Precisely, that should be in the opposite direction. Another said, correction. Exactly, so we would need prices to start moving down. Notice that just by doing this, applying those three waves 
three rules that you just learned, we could predict the next price move. Isn't that something? Very simple, right? Very, very simple stuff, yet so possible to help us predict price moves. Let's look at another chart. And this one I'm going to show you. Again, this is a weekly chart. The other one was probably daily, I don't remember. But look at this weekly chart. This applies to all time frames, okay? It doesn't really matter. So this is not a concern. Again, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a, a helicopter view, okay? It means we cannot identify wave two. Why not? Yes, we can identify wave two. Sure. So here, let's take a helicopter view. We're going to take this low to start our count. OK, we're going to take a helicopter view. And we see up, down. Go into your helicopter and see up, down, and up. And again, look at what we have. One, two, three, four, and five. If you don't have, if you have problems with the helicopter view, you know what you could do? You could add a moving average, a very tiny incy, wincy moving average, moving average simple to say, okay? And then, um, let's see, let's make it, this is, a, this is a nice way to see a helicopter view, okay? So let's, Let's make it a small period of five or four, it's okay. And let's make it a little bit bigger so we can we can see it better. Okay, let's make this. <laughs> okay. So this would give you a better helicopter view, you see? Up, down, up, down, up. So you can see how simple it could be to take a helicopter view. All right, so if that helicopter view is correct, we can say, well, this is one, this is two, then this is three, this is four, and this is five. So now the question is, we have five wave move again. What do we expect now? Higher, higher highs and higher lows? What do we expect? Should we be able to predict this? You have to answer me quickly because we're running out of time. <laughs> Can we predict the next move? Yes, exactly. We can expect an A, B, C. In other words, down and move in the opposite direction. This is on a weekly basis. And look what we can do. We can expect prices to start moving down. Okay, that's important. Now you would say, well, you know, like everybody says, you know, yeah, it's very easy to see Elliott wave when the market has gone, has done it, but you know, nobody can do it uh, as it's happening and nobody can see the future and all that. Well, so let's do one that is happening right now. So you can actually see if or predict what the next meaningful move will be. Okay. Oh, seems like I labeled it. Okay, let us let me take the labels away. <laughs> to trick you a little bit. Okay. Let's forget all that. Okay, so let's take it from, let's take it from this low here. Okay, then from that low, again, what do we see? Up, down, up, down, up. You'll notice that the downs are, very related, that's typical. So again, it looks like we can uh, label this as a one, two, three, four, and the five apparently is in progress, right? Okay, so now let's see. Let's go again with the rules. Did wave two travel more than 100% of wave one? No. Did wave three? Or is wave three the shortest? No. Okay, good. Did wave five end in the price territory of wave one? No. 
So the three rules are respected and we have a five way move up. So what can we expect next? And by next, I mean once at these five waves, remember that each one of these waves should have five waves, right? When we see these five waves complete, it looks like it's missing a little bit. For that, we will need to go to a smaller time frame. This is a daily chart. We will probably need to go to a hour chart and check this to see if it qualifies as five wave move. When the five wave move is complete, you know what can we expect? Of course, we can expect an ABC down. And that ABC down typically ends by the fourth, let's say, let's put it this way, by the fourth of one lesser degree. So typically you will find that you will have all these decline. That's a major move, okay? This is a daily chart. So you can see how you will be able to predict this market with a little knowledge that you learned today. Okay, that's all, guys. I will be answering any questions you have in the next minute or so because I don't want to make uh, David upset with me. So if you have any question, please let me know. I have absolutely nothing to, uh, uh, no product to share with you today or invite you to buy anything from me or any course. The only thing I could offer you is I just started three months ago, I think I started this channel, uh, Technical Analysis Institute in YouTube. It's just starting, you know, we only have 400 subscribers and we don't have many views, some have very little views. But uh, here I will be sharing a lot, actually not a lot, I'll be sharing the entire wave principle there in details. So if you want to have many presentations like this, you can go there, subscribe and you'll get them um, at no cost to you. Okay, let me check the questions. Do you provide specific trainings? Of course I do, but I don't have anything right now prepared for that. I mean, there are many, you, you can go to my website here and you can see there, there are video courses there. You can you can navigate that yourself. There are Elliott Wave made this is a very good course. We have a, a, a mastery series, it's all, all, all nice. And you can get whatever you want, it's no problem. You can be in touch with me as well. Um, but for the time being, I think I will go to here, subscribe to that, and you will get a lot of training. Okay, I think that's all, guys. How to determine beginning of wave uh, five down? You mean the, the, the end of wave five? Okay, there are ways to determine that. One of them is by counting the internal five waves of wave five. Remember that all of those waves must have five waves okay so let's let's make a quick uh, just a quick uh, drawing david one two and now we're going to have five waves here for wave three and then we have wave four and now we should have five waves here for wave five okay so when you're able to spot these five waves inside here then you'll be able to determine the price has gotten to a, a, a top now, are there other ways? Of course there are, many. There are many ways to um, forecast where the top is going to be by using a lot of Fibonacci projections. Remember that wave five relates to wave one through three, it relates to wave, to wave one, it relates to wave four, it relates to many of the 